Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so glad this morning to be bringing God's truth to you. Are you ready today to call forth your daily bread? I'm so ready. I'm ready to call and I'm ready to stand in faith with you. Praise God. So if you're ready, declare these words. You say, Father, I believe I have daily bread. So Lord, I demand for it right now. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Yesterday I was sharing something beautiful with you. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12 it says, We have received the Spirit of God, not the Spirit of the world, so that we will know the things that have been freely given to us. And I was telling you some of those things yesterday. And I told you divine health is one. Blessings, God meeting your daily needs is one. See, now a good marriage is one. Everything that produces soundness of mind is a free gift from God. Everything that produces soundness. You remember Jesus said, ask and receive so that your joy may be full. See, ask, so you will receive. And what is God thinking about your receiving? He is looking at you and thinking your joy should be full. Praise God. Yeah. Now that is, that is what he wants to see in your life. Because it's a free gift. Joy is a free gift. Now he says, we have been given the spirit of God to know these things. Meaning you don't know them by reading in school. No, you don't know them because you went for your PhD and, 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 and became a professor in, 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 in studies and stuff. No, no. You know, I love God. You see, that's why the Bible says the race is not to the swift. The battle it's not to the strong. In other words, it's not the swift, the swiftest person that wins the race. It's not the strongest person that wins the battle. God does one thing to everybody. And what is that? He says time and chance happens to everybody. And that's why you should know that you can't blame anything for your situation. You can't say, well, I wish I had... Um, I had gone to a very good school. I know where I would have been today. That's wrong. There are people who went to that good school and they are nowhere today. And there are people who went to not so good schools and they are ruling you today. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. So think about it. That thought is wrong. Even by physical things we can point out, it's wrong. It's wrong. Think about all the schools you went to. Think about it from your primary school, your secondary school, your university days. Where are all those bright people? Those people used to wonder, say, ah, this guy, they know book. Can you, can you say they are all doing far better than you? And then can you look and say, oh, all the guys that were not so good, they are all doing so poorly. Time and chance have happened. Time and chance have happened. And it can just happen that the, 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 a, the A guys are working for the D guys. Why? Time and chance happening. Not because Ali Braka Shapatea. Not because, you know, they, 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 didn't, they, they got their A's and then they, they, they didn't. No, 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 no. Time and chance happens to them all. The difference, they it, say, it, that is where people make the mistake. You know, somebody, you, you hear people say this thing sometimes. They say, eh, after graduating with first class, can you imagine I came out and I don't have a job? Now you know the truth. If you graduated with the first class and you're looking for a job, someone should be suspecting you. Yeah, because if you knew that thing so well, there are two things you should be doing. Teaching others 
on how to know that thing and get it done or you yourself getting it done, praise God. Yeah, so you shouldn't be looking for a job with your first class degree. You should be providing employment for other people. Now, this is the truth. Time and chance happens to you. But you know, the opportunity for this great thing you are thinking in your mind came to you. But you know what? You disqualified yourself. You looked at it and said, ah, no, 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 no. You know, let me, let me walk some. You know, let me walk for like five years. Then after walking for like five years, then I'll go do um, that thing. Because what were you thinking? You were not ready to get your hands dirty at that moment. You were thinking you're just too special. You'll be the bride of every place you go to. But that's not how it, it works. If God have put something in you, use it to produce. Use it to produce stuff. And stop blaming people. Don't blame people. Oh, I was supposed to get that job, but that man just yeah, employed his brother. He employed his kinsman over me. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, it's his kinsman. Don't blame him for that. Eh, why should he take that one um, instead of professionalism? Well, he knows what he's looking for. He knows what he's trying to build. See, you know, people, someone set up his business and you're trying to tell him how to run it. You were not there when he conceived the business. So leave people alone. Let them take their choices. Whatever their choices lead them into, that's their business. But don't, don't claim to be a victim of another person's choice or another person's decision. I reject that over your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will never be a victim of circumstances. You will never be a victim of another person's decision. No way. It doesn't matter what decisions have been taken. You are going to take your own decision and you are going to be on top in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, now let's go back to what we're talking about. No, I believe that was for someone. Praise God. He said, now we have received the Spirit of God that we may know the things that are freely given to us. Now, watch this now. He says, verse 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, which things also we speak, okay, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Okay, so now these free things that I have received, that I have been given by God, that will take the Spirit of God in me to locate them, to know them. Now, knowing them is one thing, operating in them is another. You may know that you have divine health, but still be falling sick and running to the hospital every day. You may know that you have divine prosperity. You may confess it. You may know all the scriptures, but still you're still begging for bread. You may know your life should be more than this, but there's still nothing you feel you can do. Why? Knowing it is not enough. You've got to depend. Now, that is why God gave you the Holy Spirit. You've got to depend on on the Holy Spirit to teach you. You know, the Bible says, walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. How do you walk out your salvation? He's not telling you, you know, uh, be still, be, be holy, and, and don't do this, and don't do that. How do you walk out your salvation? You walk out your salvation with the one who saved you. You get in partnership with him and you ask him, Lord, what would you have me do today? As he instructs you and commands you, what I do? You are working out your salvation. You can't work out your salvation alone. How? How do you want to work it out? Where's your blueprint? So you work out your salvation by partnering with the Holy Spirit. Day on, day out, you partner with him. Now, you, you go before him and say, Lord, mm, I... I see that I have received divine health. Because of this scripture, because of this thing you said, because of that thing you said, because of what you did here, because of what you did there. And Lord, if this is true, 
that I shouldn't be sick. Holy Spirit, why then do I fall sick every month? That is wrong. It's not supposed to be. I have received divine health. Divine health is supposed to be working in me. Why then do I fall sick every month? That's the good question. That's the right question. Hey, Lord. Because cause you, you, you know these things from your spirit. You, you may have heard a preacher preach it. You may have heard someone share his testimony with you. And then you're like, Lord, wait, wait, Lord. These things are things that belong to us. So these are things that ought to belong to me. I'm not supposed to be begging. I'm not supposed to be borrowing. Lord, these are free things that have been given to me. Why then am I still borrowing? Now, when you realize that you are sinning against the Lord, now what does it mean sin against the Lord? I'm not just talking about lying, fornication. Hey, hey, there are deeper sins that, in fact, there are things that lead to those ones. If you deal with these ones, you will not find yourself doing those ones. If, if you walk in righteousness, for example, what does it mean walk in righteousness? You're in tune to the Spirit of God. Every day, walking by His leadership, you're enjoying fellowship with Him. You're driving the Holy Spirit. He's talking to you. So you are too conscious of the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. You, you, will, not, you, you will not remember the last time you did what, what people call sin. Rather, you, you find out that you're like, ah, man, I did something wrong. So they say, hey, you, what did you do? Do you know the Holy Spirit told me to, to get to be somewhere at four o'clock? I, I, not that I forgot, but I, I had to, I had some other thing I wanted to do quickly and, and, it, and my heart is just breaking. Uh -huh. What are you talking about? <laughs> I, I, I thought you wanted to say something serious. But you don't know that it's serious. Now, you, you pause and say, Lord, I'm not supposed to be broke. I am not supposed to be broke. I am not supposed to be. You are my shepherd. Is that what you said? You are my shepherd. I should not want. So how come, what is this thing that every time I'm looking for money? It's wrong. It's wrong, Lord. It's wrong. Holy Spirit. You've got to teach me how to assess these things. Because it says, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. Now, what's the difference? Oh, I need money. Man's wisdom tells you, go get a job. That's man's wisdom. That's man's wisdom. Yeah, that's man's wisdom. I need money, Lord. <laughs> Lord, I need money. I said, all right, take your hook. Go to that lake, drop it. The first fish you catch, you find the money you're looking for in its mouth. Now, now, how? How do you describe that? What Jesus did? Which the Holy Ghost teaches. What are the things the Holy Spirit is teaching you to do? Take your hook, go to the lake, and say, Lord, I'm not a fisherman. I'm not a fisherman. And I go to the lake. If I go to the lake, people will be looking at me like one strange human being. What am I doing there with the hook? Do I? No, you're just maybe an angel. Say, and say, you want to behave like a white man. You go and buy a hook. Go and look for. Come on now. What, what's wrong with you? The Holy Ghost is teaching you what to do. And you're here telling yourself all the reasons why you cannot do it. Then you will remain broke. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You remain broke. Why am I sick? Lord, I'm not supposed to be sick. All right. Go to that pool and dip in that pool seven times and you'll be fine. Pool? <laughs> I say I'm sick. I'm having cold and fever. You're telling me to enter a pool. But the Holy Ghost is teaching you something. We must begin to pay attention to what the Holy Spirit is teaching. Not just commanding, but teaching. As against what the world is teaching. 
In other words, we have to pay attention to the, to the counsel the Holy Spirit is giving, the advice the Holy Spirit is giving as against what the world is giving. For therein, you will begin to realize and function in those free things that God has given to you. This is how it works. It works by the, you yielding to the teachings of the Holy Spirit. If you are going to pay attention to what the Holy Spirit is teaching you, I'm telling you the truth. 2022, you're going to walk like a child of God. Praise God. And that's how you're going to walk. Praise God. Thank you very much for, for spending this time. And I pray that this weekend, this weekend, you're going to enjoy God's goodness as you spend time to be taught by the Spirit of God. You will see his goodness like never before. I'll see you again on Monday. God bless you. Bye.